first the deadly flu and the new and alarming numbers coming in from the CDC tonight. Among the worst flu season in a decade, and it hasn't peaked yet. 39 states now reporting high flu activity. Seven more children lost last week alone. 37 children dying so far this season. But tonight, another age group making news because of how hard this is hitting this year, baby boomers. And what about the caretakers? If you're caring for someone with the flu, should you get Tamiflu as well? Here's ABC's Lindsay Janice tonight. Tonight, 37-year-old mother Carly Ilg Slavin from Indiana, one of the flu epidemic's latest victims. Her father says she'd been taking care of her husband and children who had the virus when she started feeling sick. My wife called and said, get over here right away. They put her in ICU. She's in critical condition. He says she died just three days after testing positive for the flu. We all were there standing around her and uh, she left about 630 in the morning. Carly's story highlighting the danger to caregivers and others at home. Tonight, the CDC recommending that some people at a higher risk take a preventative dose of Tamiflu, even if they don't have the flu, a step that could cut their chances of getting the virus by up to an estimated 80 percent. If there are infections in the household and you're concerned about an older individual in the home, talk with your doctor and see if pro the prophylactic medicines are something that would be useful. Across the country, nearly 12,000 flu patients so sick they've had to be hospitalized. The CDC says the number of children reported to have died from the flu this season has climbed to 37. 12 year old Dylan Winnick's family says he had a fever on Monday and died on Tuesday. Shocking. You get a call that, um, that he's passed. How the hell does that happen? David, something unique this year. The CDC says hospitalization rates for people between the ages of 50 and 64 are higher than for the very young. It's usually the other way around. The hardest hit group of people still those 65 and older. David. All right, so seniors, children, and this year, the baby boomers, too. Lindsay, our thanks to you. And about that point you heard from Lindsay, their caretakers, caring for loved ones with the flu, should they be taking Tamiflu as well? Let's dig into this with Dr. Ashton. Jen's here tonight. And Jen, I know that your daughter has the flu at home. Uh, we wish her a speedy recovery along with everyone at home dealing with this. But this notion about Tamiflu, you were mentioning that you were on it. Obviously, you're a doctor. It's easier uh, to get. But it's really important for people to consider this at home. Exactly. And I also treat pregnant women. Um, but in general, the vulnerable high-risk groups that should consider Tamiflu as a prophylactic measure to reduce their risk of getting sick if they've had direct contact. High-risk groups include people over the age of 65, anyone with chronic medical condition like asthma, pregnant women, or anyone with a weakened immune system. Those are the vulnerable groups. And in the meantime, Jen, we'd heard for years that you have to be on Tamiflu within 48 hours of symptoms, but you've learned something else now. That's really the old thinking. Uh, there was that firm line in the sand about the 48-hour mark. Now there's new data that suggests that even after the first 48 hours of symptoms, antiviral medications like Tamiflu can be helpful. So that should not be a reason to withhold treatment. All right, Dr. Ashton with us as well. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.